Hey guys, what's up? Stock Retail coming back to you on Tuesday, the 29th of August. Uh, if you didn't catch yesterday, we went pretty deep on FTDs and in particular some academic research that kind of highlights um, not really just FTDs, but specifically how manipulators try to manipulate both the market and manipulate your psychological state to get you out of a stock. Uh, so if you haven't seen that one, maybe check it out because we're going to double click now and actually make this sort of the so what today. So what? does this really mean to AMC and what are we dealing with here? So if you have a good understanding from either yesterday's video or your own past DD on FTDs and how those are used to manipulate stocks and manipulate um, sentiment, then today is going to really flow and just ground us in exactly what's happening to AMC specifically and kind of take a look. You can even see in the title, um, you know, who exactly is AMC having 1000 times the FTDs of so we'll talk a little bit about that. Maybe badly constructed sentence there, but I think you guys understand me uh, well enough. So if you didn't see yesterday, I'm going to just fly by real quick, remind ourselves what we covered, uh, but you could obviously just pause this and go check that out first. It, I think it would help a lot um, to understand where we're at and what we're dealing with. So first off, I mentioned that I had found some academic research. This is actually on the SEC's website. I kind of was tongue-in-cheek poking at them a little bit when I tweeted it out. Because uh, if you recall the video they made effectively, you know, calling us dumb money, interesting, you know, kind of a approach by the regulatory body who we expect to protect us. Uh, maybe you've seen that video that was kind of saying, hey, do your DD, but made us look like we don't know what we're doing. Well, the same website has this academic research posted on it. Uh, you can go read. It's like a 60 page research article. Um, on FTDs and how, so let me give you a couple quotes here. So first of all, this was just the person writing this, not the SEC, who said, hey, naked shorts have a severe market impact. And I'm going to prove that to you in this research paper. And so I kind of shared that. And then in the same paper, they were quoting the SEC. So now this is the SEC talking about 20 years ago. It was kind of the early 2000s where the SEC said, naked short selling masquerading as routine fails to deliver. That it was a growing problem, a growing concern. Well, think about routine. That's sort of systematic, repetitive, um, something we're seeing a lot of. Well, what are we seeing a lot of in AMC? If you have not been tracking, and I'm sure all of you have, then you might not know that AMC has been on the threshold list for failures to deliver 46 days straight as of yesterday. Uh, it's too early today. It hasn't been reported, but today would be the 47th straight day if we're there. Um, that's certainly routine. If you get 47 straight trading days, of being on the threshold list, which is already after having a certain amount of failure to delivers for a few days before that. And if you uh, recall, AMC has been on the threshold list about half of all trading days for the entire year of 2023. That is definitely routine fails to deliver. So you note that the SEC themselves was saying, hey, routine fails to deliver is basically naked short selling. It's just hiding it. Um, you could find the same thing on Investopedia. I've posted that once or twice on Twitter that Investopedia kind of says, hey, one of the signs of sort of fraudulent and corrupt short selling is uh, failures to deliver. So we kind of established that pretty clearly. Uh, we reminded ourselves yesterday that uh, the no less than the president of the New York Stock Exchange back in 2021, when we were kind of running, um, had said, hey, on these stocks, you know, mostly GameStop and AMC, the stock price probably doesn't really reflect supply and demand. And a lot of that I was connecting back to this issue with FTDs. It kind of messes with supply and demand, and that was shown in that academic article as well. So all of that covered yesterday with a whole lot more. Check that out sometime if you want. Um, but now let's go through AMC itself. So here I'm just going to give you a little bit of just a, a kind of a bunch of stats, but then we're going to dive into it a little bit more visually uh, for those of you who want to see it more that way. So first off, for the year, I, I pulled all the FTD reports for the entire year. Um, I have a whole other video that I'm going to talk about. I guess let's let's dive into this and I'll explain. So uh, there's 720 million shares of FTDs for the year. Insane already, uh, just at the surface of that, right? Um, but see how see how it says like see the note at the bottom here. I've done a whole video from July 28th. If you want to understand how to look at FTDs, that video was even saying basically why a lot of people are getting FTDs wrong and how to count those. One of the big things there is you can't add them up. So already at the top of this video, in some ways I'm telling you this wrong. When I say there's 720 million FTDs, that's that's not a real accurate way to, to look at this. So we'll, we'll follow up with an accurate way to look at this. I'm just giving you this for illustrative purposes. 
illustrative, however you want to say that. Um, but you can't add them up. So if you want to understand how to rightly count FTDs, check out that video from July 28th. So now let's look at it a little more rightly. The average for the year, the daily average of FTDs, is about 3.4 million. Um, so that's more like if you looked at the sort of average closing of the day, we would have closed with 3.4 million of these sitting out there. That's 3.4 million shares that you bought that are not showing up in your account. I mean, you see them uh, on your screen, but that's just a number on a screen. The broker hasn't actually delivered shares into your account. That's kind of a mess and that's wrong. And then the thing is, if you look at more recent trends, because I'm looking all the way January to the end of July, that's the numbers we're able to pull right now from the SEC's website. If you look at more recent trends, it's more like 10 to 12 million a day. That's Go look at July sometime. Um, there's plenty of people who've been tweeting that out, or you can pull it directly from the SEC site. You have to know a little bit about how to convert some data uh, into Excel and kind of format it. But if you know how to do that, you can go get it directly there. Uh, interesting to note. I, so again, I pulled all the data for the whole year for every ticker across all the exchanges. <coughs> um, AMC, if you look at it as a percent of the float, AMC has the highest daily percent of float FTDs, basically in the market. Now, you notice this is our second asterisk here. I only looked, um, so I have all the data, but in terms of actually comparing tickers, I just kind of stopped at the top 40. So I looked at the top 40 by volume, what's the like total volume of FTDs that have shown up in the year. And then of those top 40, AMC had the highest percent of the float, um, I keep saying shorted, I meant F failure to deliver, FTD. So AMC has the highest percent of float that's showing up daily as FTDs. Number one in the whole market. I'm letting that sink in a little here. Uh, most stocks, here's the other thing to note, and you can get this out of the raw data um, that I looked at. Most stocks that have this heavy of an FTD, and again, AMC is actually number one, but most stocks with real heavy failures to deliver are going to be OTC stocks. That means they're not actually traded, you know, like on the New York Stock Exchange and those kinds of things. So you're talking penny stocks, um, and they're, they're micro cap, again, basically penny stocks. So it's, um, boy, bizarre would be an understatement to say. It's really, really bad and not okay and highlighting a problem that an exchange traded stock is the highest failure to deliver percent of the float of all stocks out there even more than these OTCs and penny stocks because you get a lot of odd trading with penny stocks and OTCs they're even more uh, I'll make up a word manipulatable I don't know maybe that's a real word um, but with exchange traded stocks, it shouldn't be the same. So let's in a moment compare this to other exchange traded stocks, just to really show ourselves. I'm going to show that visually. But also, I want before we move on, I want to remind you, kind of we're back to this notion of manipulating stock price. There are other methods. So you've seen some things lately about shorts marked as longs. I told you in one video that um, Citadel's been fined dozens upon dozens upon dozens of times uh, for mismarking shorts as long. Uh, you know when you get kind of to the second accident or whoops, and then you get to the third and the fourth and the dozenth and the dozenth, dozenth, dozenth. At some point, it's on purpose, right? You guys understand that. So they're trading short, but marking it as long. That's a problem, right? Let's remember that shorts are self-reported, kind of a problem there too. Um, synthetic shares is also a way to manipulate price. Dig into that sometime. Uh, we've talked a lot about deep in the money options being a way to sort of reset the... Um, the clock on FTDs, that's another thing worth kind of doing your homework on and learning more about. Uh, and then swaps, all kinds of swaps, credit default swaps, something I'm learning about called bullet swaps, uh, all kinds of things there. So there's, and I'm not even marking everything. We've talked in other videos about high frequency trading and wash sales and a whole host of other issues. So there's a lot of ways our stock is getting manipulated. And that really matters because, um, you know, if it's not real, then at some point it's just a spring getting coiled. And that's why some of us you know, are still here for the squeeze. Cover that more later. Um, all right, so how about averages per day? Let's compare across a few tickers. Uh, again, this is more the way you want to look at it. You don't add them up, but you could kind of take an average daily landing number, let's call it. So Mullen actually has a higher per day quantity of shares. Um, we're going to look in relative terms in a minute because I think that matters. Let's look at it as a percent of the float. So we'll come back to that. But Mullen Automotive, 
Um, a lot of you are tracking that. I see that in my feed. There's a lot of AMC apes who kind of cross over into that uh, ticker. And I've seen, by the way, also some of the updates about some of the court filings and things. Uh, very, very relevant, I think, to AMC. If you haven't seen, maybe check that out sometime. There's some court proceedings and some interesting allegations um, about what some big brokers, like I, I want to say I saw Schwab and maybe TD Ameritrade and some other, some big brokers and what they're doing. Uh, and I guess I'm just saying interesting to track because it you could almost replace the ticker and it sure looks a lot like what AMC is dealing with to me. So I'll be following that court case a little bit. Um, you see AMC is 3.4 million a day. Uh, a lot of us still care about GameStop. You know, there's a lot of crossover apes there. You know, even if we've been attacked by so-called elitists, most of whom I don't believe are actual apes at all. They're just trying to cause division. Whole other topic for another day. I'm not going to go there. But anyway, GameStop, you can see, is more like 40,000 a day. Uh, you know, different float. So again, we're going to look at relative terms in a minute here. You can see Google is less than, um, oh, it's about 29,000 a day. And then Target is 4,000 a day and, and Nike 3,000 a day. So just compare you know, you look at, say, Target and, and Nike at three or 4,000 shares a day, AMC is at three or 4 million shares a day, or recently even 12 million shares a day. So you start to understand sort of the size of the problem for AMC. But okay, let's not talk in terms of just straight up numbers, because what if one company has a much bigger float than another company? Uh, if you're newer here, maybe you haven't tracked as much, or you're new to stocks, whatever, uh, float is just like, what are all the shares that are out there? How many shares are out there trading? Uh, so for AMC, if you look at a percent of the float that FTDs per day across the entire year, and remember I said the recent trend is way, way higher. Uh, by the way, I'm looking at the data where I'm, because APE has already converted, uh, I have looked at, I've just combined the APE and AMC FTDs, and then what's more, I've also kind of reflected the um, reverse split, so kind of uh, and there's splits on some several others of these tickers. So we're kind of correcting for splits and reverse splits, and we're correcting for conversion and all that stuff. So this is kind of real time. And so basically across the year at our current float, corrected for reverse split, all that, uh, AMC is about a third of a percent a day of the entire float that does not get delivered to us. Uh, that might not sound big as a percent, but we're going to look more in a minute. And you can just see visually how much bigger this is. You know, I looked at Highcroft as well. Interesting that Highcroft is quite a bit higher as a percent of the float than uh, GameStop or Mullen. And you can see Target and Nike and Google don't even show up. Um, you know, I'm not at all surprised to see Highcroft attacked. I've explained in a couple other videos, and just in case some of you haven't heard, because AMC owns a position in Highcroft, a fairly sizable one, um, if Highcroft stock ever goes up within a quarter, then you will see the earnings report show that as income. And the reverse is true too. When Highcroft stock goes down across a quarter, AMC shows that as an expense. Basically the change in price times the amount of shares that AMC owns shows up as expense or income. So it actually impacts our earnings reports, but that's not cash going in or out the door. So you can kind of correct for that too. I'm not concerned about that in terms of cash flow, but just so you know, it does impact our earnings. And so I track Highcroft uh, pretty closely as well. So you can just see in relative terms what I already said. AMC is has far more failures to deliver than anybody else. <coughs> so here's where we get to the the title of the of the video itself. This is uh, in relative terms again using that percent that FTDs every day. How many more times than other companies is AMC FTD? So you can see it's basically a thousand times more that AMC has failures to deliver by the day than Google, and almost a thousand times more than Nike, and 200 times more than Target, and almost 20 times Mullen, and 16 times GameStop, and about two and a half times Highcroft. So on the left, you're seeing more normal behavior. But rem this is showing you AMC is that much more than them, right? So really it's saying it shouldn't happen. In a normal stock, this just shouldn't happen. Now, you could just argue, all right, there's all kinds of shorting and whatever, and um, yeah, I don't know. L let's talk more in a minute here. So other notables that I did look at, uh, there's a ticker. I don't know much about it, but it really popped out to me because if you look at IDEX, there's more FTDs than the float. And when I say more, I mean by a lot. So um, that one would actually show up higher than AMC in terms of percent and all of that. So I don't know, if you want to check out sometime and find out 
fraud and manipulation. And part of the point of this is I want us all to know, and I'll talk at the end a little bit about I want us all to keep eyes on this and keep loud. Um, it's important that we know what's going on in the marketplace and that we let people know we know. Uh, I already talked about Highcroft. Uh, of course, Bed Bath & Beyond, you know, I'm not at all surprised to see that one showed up pretty high as well. Uh, as a percent, it was pretty close to AMC. Uh, I just didn't talk too much about it because it's now already gone through bankruptcy and it's got some pretty wonky numbers uh, as a result of some of that process, I think. Interesting to see some indexes show up. So the SPY, the IWM. IWM is something I've tracked for a long time. At one point, it was really, really, really heavily shorted, like to insane levels. I think even that one was maybe more than the float at some point as well. Uh, now I'm talking like a whole year ago or, or more or something like that. Um, so just interesting to see that you're failing to deliver uh, indexes. That doesn't seem to be healthy either, right? I know a lot of you are in like MMTLP, MMAT, that whole fiasco. So that one did show up. I'm just kind of noting that um, it, it was a lot lower in terms of percent uh, failure to deliver on that one, but it does show up on the report. Um, C3AI is another company I've kind of tracked. Um, they were really heavily shorted pretty recently. Interesting to see a couple of, uh, you know, kind of auto-related uh, companies, GoEV and Lucid, or GoEV is like Canoe. Um, these are tickers, you know, back before I was kind of all in AMC, some of these I owned, um, and then Lumen Technologies. So those are just some other notables. If you were to dig in the numbers, you'd start to see those pop up. And I just wanted to acknowledge that because I know some of you are in other tickers. And so these are some ones that pop up and potentially are highlighting more manipulation. So what do we do with all this, right? What's the takeaway? So first of all, it's just a reminder. If AMC is the top failed to deliver stock across basically the whole market and doesn't match other exchange traded stocks almost at all, you know, it's way, way higher, in some cases a thousand times higher, even in relative terms, right? So we're comparing apples to apples. Then you know that the price may be an illusion. If there's academic research and even just simple websites like Investopedia and then the SEC itself that all acknowledge Failing to deliver is a method of naked shorting and a method of manipulating stock prices. Then you got to know what you hold and stop using just the ticker to decide whether this play is working out or not. You're being shown an illusion is my opinion. Now that's opinion, but there's DD I'm connecting to that, right? I'm giving you some information that informs why I hold that opinion. And that really matters because I've talked in a couple of videos recently too. people saying, well, they're winning and, you know, shorts are in the green and all that stuff. But remember, all of this activity comes with a future bill. It's they're What they're doing is they're kicking the can and making it look momentarily like they're winning. But that's all on paper until they buy to cover. If AMC does not go bankrupt, those shorts are still out there and have not been covered. And we talked yesterday, I can hold longer than you can stay solvent, shorty. So I'm not allowing the ticker price to tell me what the DD is. That's not DD, as far as I'm concerned on AMC. If you understand how manipulation can occur, and if you decide that, like me, you believe that this stock is heavily, heavily manipulated, then why in the world would I say they're manipulating the price, but let me use the price to see how we're doing? I hope you can see the disconnect in that. So I'm going to use my DD to decide how we're doing. And if they're having to take these extreme measures, which by the way are illegal, many of which are illegal, then you tell me how desperate they are. And I don't think a desperate opponent is one I need to give in to. All right, so the other thing though is, um, you know, I am not a type of person who just rolls over and plays the victim. Now, there have been tweets recently, and even I have, um, I don't know, lent my voice to some of them. Probably if you're on Reddit or YouTube, you may be seeing this type of discussion too, um, that effectively the SEC is a captured regulating body, meaning they basically answer to not us, but to effectively banks and hedge funds, and they're not protecting the retail investor. Their core mission is to protect retail, but none of us believes they do that at all. Like, I'm just not even going to mince words. I do not believe the SEC is effective. I do not believe they are even attempting to be effective. And I believe that's part of the system. 
It's not a flaw in the system. It's designed in the system. That's my belief. Um, so we could just say, well, the system is designed for the 1%, or even I'd almost say the 0.1%. Or we could say, okay, I understand that, and so it's going to inform what I do, but I'm also not just going to shut up and roll over and be quiet. So I do think you should contact your representatives and your, um, you know, both senators and, and representatives. And I do think you should get loud. And I do think we should be contacting FINRA and the DTCC and the SEC. I'm just putting context around that to just say, hey, I'm not naive. I understand that big money is not working alone. And big money does not like to lose. But there are 3.8 million of us in AMC and a whole lot more across some of these other tickers. And I think it's okay for us to say, I'm not just going to shut up and go silently into the night. I'm going to fight and I'm going to yell. So that's what I do. You know, you do it your way. I'm just telling you me. A lot of people have tried to kind of tell me in the past, just give it up. I'm like, nope. I am not giving someone else my microphone. Both literally and figuratively, I keep my voice. I don't give that to somebody else. And I would just encourage you to do the same. Have your voice. Be loud. Don't give it up to somebody else. I don't know. That's just my point of view. But also, let's know what we hold. We're already kind of to the end here, guys. Hang with me one more minute. Know what you hold. I cover this a lot, but it matters. And I've got to remind myself, and so I'm just believing maybe you've got to remind yourself. First off, remember in July, in its 103-year history, AMC had its highest revenue month it's ever had. 103 years, July was the highest revenue month across food and beverage, admissions, other revenue, add them all up, most revenue AMC's ever taken in. That's this quarter that hasn't even been reported yet, guys. That's going to be in our next earnings call. We just had a positive earnings call. Our next earnings call started off, one of the three months is the biggest month AMC's ever had in its entire history. That's what you hold. That's a stock you hold right now. Interesting that it's got the highest fails to deliver in the entire marketplace while it's hitting record revenues. Find another stock that does that. I dare you. Try it. Meanwhile, Sunday was National Cinema Day. You guys heard all about that. Last year, it was just a total success story. This year, it was up again. Look at this headline. Eight and a half million moviegoers uh, went to theaters on National Cinema Day, up 5% from last year. Now, that's U.S., uh, probably U.S. and Canada. It's domestic. Uh, so it's all all exhibitors. You know, you got Regal and Cinemark and all of that in there. It's not just AMC. But if AMC is, I think, over half of that, basically, so you say, you know, something over 4 million people went to AMC in just the U.S. and Canada yesterday. And then you figure, uh, recently, I think well, the last quarter we closed was in the 730s um, per person food and beverage spending. Now, I will say last year, I think on National Cinema Day, you know, you're getting some discount customers too because you're getting people who are coming for 4 and $5 movie tickets and so they're excited about this discount opportunity. It's a fun opportunity to go out with friends or family, get a little, um, you know, get a cheaper ticket. But that's great. That's the point. It's a promotion. Um, so let's say even they spend less than, I don't know, six fifty a person, but you figure 4 million plus people went to AMC in just the U.S. and Canada yesterday and maybe spent six or seven bucks a person on food and beverage plus that $4 ticket, that's a great day. That just happened just yesterday. Uh, sorry, Sunday. And then the last two days, our stock, stock tanked even more. Those don't match, do they? The business results and the ticker price aren't matching. And I do believe if we stick around at some point, the laws of finance are immutable. Eventually, they will have to match. That's a personal belief. Not everyone agrees with me. You need to do DD and decide. We own a company that is now selling popcorn in almost 3,000 doors. And I've told you before, I think it's around October. Don't quote me on that. We'll need to hear more from Adam and team. Um, but I believe around October that will expand to other chains besides Walmart. So imagine we get told, hey, we're no longer 2,600 doors. Now we're 5,000 doors. Imagine the explosive growth of the popcorn business for us. Adam said at some point down the road, now we're talking years away, but that that could be, you know, a nine figure business, a hundred million dollars a year in revenue. Don't forget candy's coming. We were told towards the end of this year, maybe into next year, 
Uh, just to manage expectations, I remember hearing those types of comments about popcorn and kind of kept being like, hey, win popcorn, win popcorn. Um, and it was more like it would roll into the next year. So I'm preparing myself for that for candy. I'm not like counting on that happening this year. Sure would love it. It would be awesome. We heard Adam eating those chocolate covered pretzels in an earnings call. I want some. I want some of the gummies and the other chocolates and whatever that they're going to have. Um, and I've talked about on this channel a reminder that I think that might even be um, a little bit more of a contribution than popcorn. Think about it like this. AMC was already selling popcorn in theaters, right? But right now, they're not selling any of their own candy in theaters. They're only selling others. So any candy they start to sell in theaters adds to our revenue because you're, you're capturing a higher percent of the margin is what happens. Uh, it's kind of financial discussion here that I'm getting at. But then they're also going to add it in grocery stores. And so if you go, you know, we're adding revenue in theaters and adding revenue in grocery stores, I think candy could kind of be that double hit. So that's coming. That's something you own. You own that stock. And I've shown you this before, but boy, this is the domestic box office this year. And I want to clarify something. Uh, someone tried to, uh, I don't know, troll me on one of the videos and thought they were going to score some points and dunk. And they said, well, what a dumb chart. Of course, it only goes up. It's week by week. Well, here's the thing. I Read the top of this chart. Year over year. If you understand anything about comparisons, you know, I don't know, look at health data, look at car sales. In this case, look at movie ticket sales. Anything year over year, you're doing this year minus last year. In fact, here, I'll just highlight. Watch for my arrow here on the screen. Look at these few weeks where we went down. And the whole point is, I've told you guys before on this channel, if you're at zero, what it means is you're tied. Think of it like a race. It's, is this year racing ahead of last year or not? And if this year was doing worse than last year, we'd be down negative. So to whoever you were, I can't even remember the user who tried to say, well, this is dumb. You're just a pumper. It literally called me a pumper. Um, no, these are straight up facts. You can go get the domestic box office numbers yourself. That's why I always say, don't trust me, bro. I've shown on this channel where to even get this data. You don't even need to take it from me. You can go get the data for yourself and fact check this. This is at a point in time. It's a point in time chart. So if you understand a little bit about numbers, that tells you something. Point in time, how did we compare to last year overall? It's a cumulative chart. And so right now, we're almost $1.35 billion, billion with a B, ahead of last year. This is as of a couple days ago. I think this is as of Sunday. I think I refresh it every Sunday. It's either Saturdays or Sundays. I got to go double check. But so you see how steeply up and to the right the movie industry is. This is what you hold. Highest revenue ever, National Cinema Day bringing in millions, popcorn in almost 3,000 doors and many more coming, candy coming in theaters and grocery doors, the industry up and to the right, all while we have the highest failure to deliver percent basically in the whole market. You tell me if Shorty has some concerns or not. I'm going to hold. Let's go.